Hi guys, so I'm Dr. Joe Brown and what we're doing today is uh, I want to briefly cover some lab values and what certain labs, uh, when you go to your doctor and you get blood tests done or you do a urine test or you do certain things, what I want to do here today is I've had a number of people who have said, well, I went into my doctor and my values were told that my blood work looked good or I had some minor problems with my blood work, but they never really explained to me what values were what and what they meant and what do those numbers mean or those letters WBC what does that stand for so what I want to do today here was just take a couple minutes and kind of go through a particular patient of mine now obviously I've covered up her information and any confidential information um, so that everything is uh, essentially discreet and uh, like it should be but what I want to do is just go through her blood work and just kind of explain to you where what are, what are those letters stand for what is the numbers that this current patient happen to have and what are the normal lab values and reference ranges of what they should be in and if they're high and low what does that mean okay so if we just kind of uh, zoom in on this particular person's labs here what we did here was this was a CBC and chem panel with differential and platelets and you can see this right here chem panel basic plus CBC with differential and platelets and it starts out here by showing WBCs, okay? And if you look over here, she should have had a, norm, a, a number here, but her level here was a little bit low, okay? And that's why it's, uh, it, it has her value here and it has this L here because it's showing you that it's low. And here is what the reference range should be in, okay? And here's all the reference ranges for all the different things over here on this left side of the page. So if we just take this one by one, her WBCs, which stands for white blood cells, okay? This is what your immune system is in your body, okay? And so again, her number here should have been between 4,000 and 11,000, and she was down here at 3.7. So she's somebody who we obviously need to address things from an immune system standpoint or from a detox standpoint uh, and check into anything that might be causing her immune system to not be doing what it should be doing. Now, if you look here where it says RBCs, hemoglobin, hematocrit, going all the way down here to MPV. All of these things here are what your red blood cells and your blood cells are doing, okay? So these things, so when people are told that they're anemic, or if your energy levels are low, or you're fatigued, or you might have some kind of chronic uh, blood condition going on, these are obviously the, the numbers and uh, the things here that we want to look at here. And you can see her, her red blood cells, hemoglobin, hematocrit, all her levels here were in the normal range. You can see there's nothing out here that says it's high or says it's low, okay? Now, starting here where it says segmented neutrophils, all the way down here to differential type. All of these things here are different forms of white blood cells, okay? The things that we talked about initially. So the white blood cells here, the WBCs, this is kind of like the umbrella or the overall immune system of a certain person. And when you come down here to where it says segmented neutrophils, down here differential type, these are all the different kinds of white blood cells that represent different things that are going on in the body, okay? So in other words, for example, let's say you have high neutrophils, but you have low lymphocytes. Well, that tells us doctors or practitioners, people who are familiar with reading these blood tests, that you might have something going on in terms of a bacterial infection, okay? If your lymphocytes were high and your, and your neutrophils were low, it's going to tell me that there's most likely a viral infection that you're dealing with in the body, okay? So depending on what these numbers down here in this region are, it goes back up in here and tells us that we have an overall problem with our white blood cells in our immune system. Now let's go down here where they start the glucose level. Your glucose level, according to most labs, should be right here between the ranges of 65 to 99. This is the range. Now you can see her, her level was 88. Now, this is normal, okay, when, when somebody's fasting, but the problem is, is that anytime you start getting up here in this, you know, you get here to 90, 91, 92, or up here in this 90 region, it's a concern for me that's telling me that you're probably not exercising as much as you should be, you're probably not eating as healthy as you should be, because the bottom line is that we don't want your sugar levels to start approaching this cutoff range of up here in this 90 region, okay, because it's a sign or it gives us concern of people having diabetes, okay? So again, exercise, good nutrition, things of that nature. Now, when we get down here to this section here where it says urea, nitrogen, creatinine, and GFR. Now, GFR stands for glomerular filtration rate. So essentially, it's how much water compared to proteins are going through your kidneys. 
So you can see here, her range of protein here should be between this range right here, and she was just a hair above that area, okay? So it means her protein level probably needs to go up just a little bit. And you can see her here, her GFR, which is again, her glomerular filtration rate passing through her kidneys, is up here at 98. So she's far above the cutoff range of, of being greater than 60. So this is essentially how much protein compared to fluids you have going through your kidneys. And again, she's looking very good in this area here, okay? So, so far on her particular labs here, my only two concerns were these white blood cells being a little bit low, okay? Because again, she should have been here above this 4.0 region. And if you go down here to the sugar levels here, she's got a normal sugar level, but I like to see this down in the lower 80s, uh, you know, or high 70s, okay? Now, getting down here to your uric acid and a lot of your electrolytes of your kidneys here. So, you can see her uric acid level is normal. Now, what is uric acid? So, if you have a high uric acid level, it means that you might be eating too much protein in your diet. It means that you might be drinking too much, things of that nature. And when you specifically look at your sodium, your potassium, your chloride, okay, these are direct electrolytes that are in your body and that are, that are passing through your kidneys here, okay? So these things are main, main electrolytes of your body that if somebody's gonna have, you know, they're gonna be dehydrated or, uh, you know, if you have low potassium levels, it puts you at a, at, a, at a risk for heart attack or stroke. So these are gonna be key electrolytes that we wanna look at to make sure that you're not dehydrated and, and there's not certain things that are going on with the kidney levels because that will overlap into causing electrolyte problems. When we get down here to carbon dioxide and ion gap, these are gonna be things that are measured in the blood, okay? And so again, depending on what your carbon dioxide or anion gap is, this is gonna to help determine certain conditions will raise your carbon dioxide level and or lower your carbon dioxide level. So along with these electrolytes and some of these blood markers here, it shows us that these levels here are gonna be indicators if they're high or if they're low on certain things that could be going on with that person, okay? Now, this is page two of this same CBC and Chem panel, okay? And so, continuing on here with the blood work here, we have osmolarity, proteins of the blood, albumin, globulin, and your albumin-globulin ratio, okay? Now, what does that mean? Well, this is essentially checking the osmolality of the blood, okay? It's just essentially, it's a marker kind of like pH or you know, you don't want to be too alkaline, you don't want to be too acidic. Well, osmol osmolality is essentially, it, it's different than pH, obviously, but it, it's the same thing. You don't want to be too high or too low in the bloodstream. Now, when it comes to proteins, your albumin and globulin, so this is your total proteins that are found in your blood, and this is your, your different kinds of proteins, your albumin and your globulin, that's found in your blood when you break the blood down. And so what this, deter what this tells us is that, again, are you on a good diet? Are your protein levels excessively high or, or too low? So if you're in a starvation mode, if you're going through cancer and you're not taking in enough protein or you have certain conditions, these levels might elevate or decrease, okay? Now, something that many people are familiar with here is gonna be your cholesterol and triglyceride levels. So in America here, it's very common in many countries where people or doctors are telling people you know, you need to exercise more, you need to get on a better diet, you need to lose some weight. Well, that's gonna be one of those conversations kind of comes from this area of the blood work right here, your cholesterol and triglyceride levels. Now you can see here, this patient here, her cholesterol was 171, which is way below the level of 200 of what this lab says it likes to be, okay? Now, one distinction on blood work here that I just wanna make with you guys is that a lot of the reference ranges here, okay, like we were talking about on the other page, they give you certain reference ranges from low to high of what is considered the normal value. Cholesterol level is one of those things that a lot of people, especially naturopathic doctors and, and herbalists, even though this number is considered normal if you're less than 200, we actually like to see it less than 180, okay? You don't wanna to go too low, but you also don't wanna to go too high either, okay? But again, she's at 171, which is a below that 180 level, looking very good here, and her triglyceride levels are down here at 50. Now, I can directly tell you that literally just two and a half months ago, her cholesterol and triglyceride levels were off the charts. And they're one of the reasons why she came here to me to this office is because she was wanting to get on some of our supplements and some of her diet protocols 
so that we could help her reduce some of her cholesterol and triglyceride levels, um, as well as lose some weight and get on a better diet, um, focus on some of her immune system and white blood cell problems that she's kind of had off and on previous to meeting me. Now, coming back to some of the blood work here, her calcium, her phosphorus, these are, again, this is just calcium in the blood, phosphorus of the blood. These are markers that help us determine kind of what's going on with some of the bones, um, you know, because obviously you have calcium and phosphorus and magnesium and things like this fluxing in and out of the bones of the body. But this is also determining how much calcium and phosphorus she has at a free level in her bloodstream, okay? Now, getting down here where it says alkaline phosphatase, GGT, ALT, and AST. These are all essentially liver enzymes or markers that help us determine what's going on from a liver standpoint, okay? Alkaline phosphatase, if this level goes up, it may mean, okay, and let me emphasize that, it doesn't necessarily mean, but it may indicate that you have a problem with the liver, you have liver tumors, you have liver disease, you have bone disease, you have things of this nature, okay? These are some of the most common problems if this alkaline phosphatase increases. Your GGT, ALT, okay? Now, especially ALT. ALT is a direct liver enzyme. So if you're a chronic alcoholic, you drink too much, you're exposed to different chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, uh, you're on certain treatments or medication, you're taking aspirin or Tylenol or over-the-counter uh, different drugs uh, for different reasons, you might be affecting your liver, which might start to raise some of these different liver enzymes, okay? Now, AST is also a liver enzyme as well, but it overlaps into some heart function as well. So if somebody just recently had a myocardial infarction, a heart attack, uh, something that was going on with their heart, if your AST level goes up and your ALT level stays down, it tells doctors or physicians that there might be something going on with the heart and not necessarily the liver, okay? So depending on what these numbers are, okay, and in other words, if this is high and this is normal or this is high and this is normal, it tells us we might be dealing with the liver or we might be dealing with the heart, okay? Finishing up on the blood work here, the lactic dehydrogenase and the bilirubin here, the lactic dehydrogenase, this is essentially an enzyme that if you have muscle disease, if you have kidney disease, if you have something going on with the liver, if you have something going on with the heart, and these things are recent events that are happening, uh, this level, this lactic dehydrogenase enzyme might increase. And if it increases, it tells you that you have something going on that's creating inflammation in the body, okay? Next, next, uh, next marker on here is your bilirubin level. This is a direct sign of, this is a direct marker of your gallbladder and an indirect marker of your liver, okay? So in other words, if this number is not within this normal range here, it, it may mean that you have gallstones or inflammation of the gallbladder. So that tells us again, a different organ of the body, but again, we need to take a look at whatever area of the body is being affected by watching these different markers here on the bloodstream, okay? Now, we also ran a lipid panel on this particular patient because again, like I told you earlier, we were, dev we were definitely double checking her cholesterol and her triglyceride levels. So besides just running a regular CBC and chem panel, I also ran a extra lipid panel on here. Now, if you notice the cholesterol and triglyceride levels here are exactly 171 and 50, which are exactly what the numbers were up here, okay? But if you look down here, this specific lipid panel breaks down your HDLs in relation to your LDLs. HDLs are what we know as your good cholesterols. LDLs are what we know as your bad cholesterols. And you can see her here, her HDL levels are up here at 75, way higher than what the normal level should be. So it means that her good cholesterol levels are actually much higher than what we would see in a normal person, which is good. Her LDL levels, which now again, this lab says it should be less than 130, I am not satisfied unless I see LDL levels less than 100, okay? But again, she's way below 100, so her HDL to LDL ratio is very, very good, okay? So again, I just kind of wanted to briefly go over one of my patient's lab results. Uh, I wanted to kind of go over this stuff with you because many people, like I said, they, they come into my office, and, and, I'll, and I'll be honest, you know, probably 99 people out of 100, they come into my office for cancer, hepatitis, they want to lose weight, they're not on a good diet, 
they're healthy, but they don't know what supplements to take. And most of the time they bring in blood work just like these. And I ask them, let's take a look at your blood work and do you know what these numbers mean? Do you, do you realize that you were high here? Or do you have a low value here? And I would probably tell you 99% of the time, patients will tell me, here's my blood work. No doctors ever went over it with me. They call me and they tell me it's high or it's low or it's good or it's bad, but they don't really explain to me what the blood work is. So I just want to take a couple of minutes there and just kind of go over each one of those values a little bit and, you know, specifically that way hopefully you guys can actually take a look at that and it helps you looking at your, your blood work person. Again, if there's anything else that I can answer for you, uh, go ahead and send me an email. You can click on the, the like button here and um, you can subscribe to the Dr. Joe Brown channel and I'll answer all your questions specifically. So thank you guys and have a good day.